aka Pat Hurst, aka Pat here, the eclectic one. Super Bowl Sunday. I got my green juicy juice. I got my green hat. I got my green shirt. We're ready to riot. So look, anyone out there, let me know your shoe sizes. Let me know what energy drinks you prefer. Let me know what what shirts you like sizes because yeah, we're going to riot. We're going to we're going to go up some poles. We're going to go into some shops and we're just it's going to be complete madness when the Eagles win later today. But that's not what we're talking about. This this video uh, it's it's been uh, yeah I've been playing with it for a while been playing with the concept for a while I thought dropping it on Super Bowl Sunday would be nice because I know a lot of you out there you, you don't follow sports it's not a big deal to you like you might just you might uh, probably a core of my audience you guys are watching the Super Bowl for the, the movie trailers and some of the commercials and it's not really about the game and the competitiveness. So we're going to take that there, and we're going to go over here. We're, we're going to connect some dots, because we are eclectic. Two weekends ago, uh, I saw a friend of mine, I haven't seen him in about 30 years, saw him at an Eagles tailgating. And, yeah, I just, look, it's, it's not like we have anything to talk about, because it's been 30 years. But, you know, like, we greeted each other, like, I, I went up to him, and I, I just expressed that when we were growing up, him and I, we were like a two-headed dragon. We both drew. We were both the drawlers of our classes. And he was so, he was a natural. He was exceptional. He was so much better than me. Uh, it, it forced me not to give up because I had to catch up to him. And a lot of times, like, we influence people in life and we don't know, like, how and why and, and where it comes from and, and all these other things. Uh, you know, like to kind of, you know, transition that into around my senior year of high school, I was completely out. Like maybe like the second time in my life, I was out of movies. I was totally out of comic books. I, you know, like I was, but I was focused on creating comic books and illustration and, and drawing. And then a couple of years go by and a friend of mine, uh, was just so excited for like Spawn and, and he kind of came over and just wanted to to see some of my collection and then hang out and talk to me and we kind of like reconnected through this uh, you know random like running and his enthusiasm for the character Spawn essentially reignited uh, the, this other like engine I had in me kind of put fuel back in me and that allowed me to to go back into the comic shops and get get curious again and then moving forward right so you know we we go forward from there 10 20 you know 10 15 years not 20 but probably probably between 10 and 15 years you know i'm i'm working in center city uh we're working in a design firm called design pros media we're making websites, we're doing print collateral. Uh, you know, a lot of my print connections are through that time. But yeah, you know, like we're busy and every single day we're, we're having meetings, we're submitting design work, we're talking with clients, we're recruiting new clients. And you know, like that was hardcore for about four years. And during that process, in that time, I, yeah, I was completely, I was even out of movies like at that point. I was, I think on repeat, I only had like two or three DVDs and I would just watch them like, and that, that was it. <laughs> One of them was the aviator, by the way. No, and then, you know, I go through this, like, breakup. And through that, I connected with uh, this other friend. You know, a lot of friends with this video. But no, I connected with this, this friend of mine from the gym. And we, together, we developed this, this love affair. And fascination with Tom Brady, and you have to understand by this point he's he's been to four Super Bowls, and it really is even even back in 2011 he was the, the goat, the greatest of all time, and and through this and kind of like through his eyes, and then through another another friend of his that's now become one of my friends, uh, I got really locked into the mindset of athletes and and how they're able to perform in pressure situations and how they're able to practice and refine their skills throughout their career where a lot of times and, and this echoes in illustration this echoes in life where you may naturally be able to do something but you can always improve it i mean like as of right now jalen hurts is about to 
go in the second year, go into the Super Bowl, you know, like as as a number two, first first year, like you know, full on like starter. And previously, he wasn't even like a great passer. Uh, he has a long myriad history, a broken history of passing, and and he was able to reverse like almost just what his his given genetics were allowing him to do. He completely reformed his muscle memory to perform a task at a higher level. And this one, when you follow the career of Tom Brady, you see this. You see how uh, skill sets are developed and, and they're kind of demolished along the way because also the game is changing and it really is like nonstop work when it comes to athletes. I think when it comes from the, the comic book world and the, the illustration world and, and the drawlers out there, we overlook a lot of these parallels. The reason why we overlook them because they reveal uh, a little bit of uh, like truth, meaning you're not working hard enough, you are lazy, you are selling yourself short. And the more you study athletes, uh, look, we got like a whole football section, like right back here, okay? When you study athletes and you really get into the mindset, you see everything you're not doing as an artist. And it, the athlete, because things are, are tangible and they're measurable with success in games won and, and how well they perform in pressure-driven situations, these are tangible, like, you know, we can, we can grab bar into them and we can study them and understand them. That's so much harder to do when you study another artist, another, like, illustrator, and when you just strictly study, for example, we're strictly studying Jim Lee, Jack Kirby, Tom McFarlane, we don't see these scenarios, but in the same way, when you sit down to draw, you you have to perform when when we're doing things with permanent pen and ink, okay? With permanent pen and ink, you cannot make an error. There is zero error, there's zero room to give. Uh, if you make an error, you have to be equally good to correct it and know what to do. We see this so much in sports. We see this a lot in athletes. And I, I'm always grateful for those two friends, you know, one of them being a gym friend, but those two friends that really just through their straight up enthusiasm uh, guided me into seeing like, you know, like a, like a whole, like I saw like a whole new world I guess we have to get corny there, that I wouldn't see otherwise. And a lot of times our, our enthusiasm affects others. My Previously, my friend's enthusiasm got, got through Spawn got me back into caring about comics. Previously, you know, like, I, and, and I, I'm always stop and go. But I said this time, uh, you know, a lot of my comic book journey now, a lot of my social media journey, a lot of my, my illustration, my, my drawing journey, uh, so much of it is fueled by social media and by you guys. And th there is a benefit for me to even putting this stuff out there and talking directly to you because I feel like it's deep and it's meaningful. And we, we want insight and we want angles and we want little nuggets for us to pull from. The more, I will, I will say this, the more you understand about the mental mindset, the mindset of athletes, and the more you understand about their training and their their regiments and and the people that they work with, the more you grasp that, the better of an artist you will become. AKA Pad here for Super Bowl Sunday. Signing out. Let's go, birds.